of interest, please visit voiceamericahealth.com. The Voice America Talk Radio Network is the worldwide leader in live Internet talk radio. Visit voiceamerica.com. The views and ideas expressed on the following program are strictly those of the host or guests and do not necessarily reflect the views and ideas held by the Voice America Talk Radio Network, its staff, and management. When you hear so many different ideas about good health, How do you separate the myths from the facts? Welcome to Healthy View Radio with your trio of co-hosts, Andrea Beeman, Lisa Lutan, and Michelle Fennighouse. Today, you'll learn what it takes to be healthy and happy within a stressful world from three experts walking their talk. Here is Lisa, Andrea, and Michelle. Hello, all of you amazing people. It's good to be here with you for another episode of our favorite Thursday afternoon radio show with your most beloved and modest hosts, <laughs> me, Andrea Beeman, Michelle Fenninghaus, and Lisa Lutan. <laughs> and yeah, these are my <laughs> girls. Uh, this is Healthy View Radio, and we've got some healthy views to share with you. And today's topic is a really good one. It's, it's near and dear to all of our hearts. I mean, they're all good, actually. Uh, today, we're going to be talking about being busy, stressed, and food obsessed, right? So isn't that the way of the world right now? So I want to know from my girls, uh, what do you think about how busy the world is right now and... Is it sustainable for human life? (laughs) Just nice light question today. (laughs) Very simple. Very simple. Well, clearly, no, we're all going to implode at a certain point from all of the input from every avenue. I mean, they're putting Wi-Fi into refrigerators, you know? What? Yeah. Like you can't go anywhere where you're not connected. In fact, when I go to my son's elementary school, it's actually quite nice because I don't know how they do it, but they block all connection. So you can't use your phone. You can't take pictures and like upload it or anything like that while you're in the school. It's actually very nice. It's like teleporting back to when we were kids. Yeah, I think that's going to be the new luxury is going away without technology and without having any plan or doing anything because we are all going crazy. We're literally able to be reached 24 seven by phone, text, social media, you name it like a million ways. And it's making us more disconnected than ever. And it's, I don't think it is sustainable. I think we're all going to crash and burn. Yeah. I don't think it's sustainable for human beings. I think it's sustainable for robots, Mm -hmm. which uh, we now have a lot, a large majority of our uh, industry is robotic right? You just put the machine on and you let it go and it does its business, but it's not sustainable for human life, right? We need our rest periods. So what do you girls do in between the busyness? Because I know that we're all busy. You girls are running, you're entrepreneurs, right? So you're busy. That's one busy heck of a thing. Uh, So what do you do to give yourself those rest periods so that you can rejuvenate? Well, I'm a big fan of meditation and breathing throughout the day. I don't think that I, I don't want to wait until it's too late and then go away for a weekend. I want to build it into my daily routine so that my body is continually bringing it down. It's not in danger. It's not in stress and using these tools along the way. And then of course, it's taking time to check out, you know, and just be just like sitting in my backyard and staring at a tree, you know, or getting away without doing anything. And I realize more and more just how important the nothingness is. Mm. I feel like I have tamed the busy factor in my life so much lately. This is, this is a cool tip. You guys are going to want to try this. If you use Google calendar or anything like that, any online calendar, you can do this instead of making a to-do list, that's like a mile long. I love lists, right? So I'd always have this big, long to-do list. And I'm like, oh, I did like this today and I did that today. And that feels pretty good. But look at all this other crap I didn't get done. And that feels really stressful. I'm so busy. I have so much to do. So the energy of it was just bad news. And then at night, I'm thinking about all the things I got to do. It's never done. Constant state of stress on the body, right? We don't want that. So what I started doing is there's no more to-do list. Hmm. Every time there's something that I have to do, I put it into my calendar. And when the day is full, the day is full. And then it has to go somewhere else or I have to move something. (laughs) But by the end of the day, every day, I've done everything that I was supposed to do. And it feels so good. I don't make it mean to make you feel bad, but I've been doing that for years, girl. (laughs) (laughs) 
like seriously the only thing is there are a few things at the calendar that do move from day to day to day just like but it's so much better than that mile long to do list that I used to have like it is a really really good tip that she just gave you guys yeah. You know, it's interesting. I also have been doing that for years and I still have an actual planner, right? So I don't put it onto the computer because then you get these things that pop up and disrupt your, your way of being. Like if I'm just chilling out and this thing pops up, you got this thing to do. No, I know in the morning that I have something to do. There it is on my calendar. And I still use one of these because um, for me, it's much easier to put a lot of stuff in here. And it's not so easy to put a lot of stuff on here because once I look at it in this context and it starts to look busy, I stop putting anything on the day. As soon as there's a too much ink or, uh, you know, yeah. pencil on there, it goes into another day. It goes into the following week uh, because otherwise there's, it's not sustainable what we've set up, right? This got to do everything, got to get it all done. You got to get your list. You got to. It's, it's really not. I mean, I think that we're the busiest society and we're accomplishing a lot of nothing. <laughs> yeah, because sure, we're trying to do so many things and then nothing's really getting done. You know, we're, we're kind of making dinner, but we're kind of just like reheating something that we bought frozen. <laughs> and we're like, we're kind of doing our work, but we're kind of at Facebook at the same time. We're not really. Oh, sorry. Everybody's watching us on Facebook right now. <laughs> <laughs> But, but don't you think that we're kind of addicted to checking the box, you know, like checking things off the to-do list. And so we tend to go to the easy ones like, oh, got three things done. And oftentimes we're so busy getting stupid things done that don't matter that we're not making time for the bigger things that do matter. Yeah, that's a big obstacle right there. <laughs> you know, one thing is just have fewer things that you take on in the first place, right? So I am the queen of turning down invitations to stuff that I don't really want to go to anyway. You know, girl. Yeah. you know, the ones where you're kind of like, oh, I feel obligated, especially with the kids. I always feel obligated, but I'm always OK. No, I'm sorry. We can't make it that day. We'll see you next time. Oh, yeah, is that totally. why you turned down my invitation? <laughs> 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 Never. Never. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's a, there's a lot of stuff to do. And there's a lot of ways we can navigate this world. And I think we have to because, you know, like Lisa said, you crash and burn, right? When we're doing too much and trying to take on everything, you crash and burn. So in my day, I always make sure that there is time for nothingness. And that means going to Central Park, going for a walk. This comes with me in my pocket, but it, it doesn't come out of my pocket unless I'm going to sit down on a bench and I have something to do, you know. But um. I uh, often I will leave the house, you know, and if I'm leaving the house and I forget my phone, my husband says, where are you going? And I go, I'm, I'm going out. He goes, no, you can't, can't go without this. And I said, I said, no, no, I, I could go without it. <laughs> Just going down to the store. At home, take your collar <laughs> off and put it down. Yeah. Because, you know, like, like you girls said earlier, you can always be found. Somebody can always call you, but you know, like I remember when I was growing up, we had something called an answering machine. <laughs> I remember those. <laughs> yeah. And you would leave the house and you would go about your business and do your stuff in the day, in the world. And then when you came home, oh, wasn't it a nice surprise? You had these people on the answering machine that you could call back and right. then have a conversation after you were done with everything you had to do with the day. But now if somebody texts me, you know, I'm not obligated to text them back. And sometimes my friends and family will get, I texted you two days ago. I texted you this, was it an emergency? <laughs> Right? Was it just banter? <laughs> and why can't we have voicemail for texts? Like, when is that going to come out already, you guys out there? Like, hello. You know, we feel like if we don't respond immediately, we're going to forget. And so there's this pressure to respond. And we usually do forget if we don't respond immediately, right? So I think that we need an answering machine for texts. Somebody <laughs> has to develop this. Oh, well, you know, it tells you on your phone. You got four messages waiting for you or whatever. Yeah, but if you look at it and you don't want to respond right away, yeah. then it moves down and you're not going to remember to get back to that person. I know. You got to check it like I'm in an email. I check it as unread so it stays bold so I can yeah. go back to it. You know, I need that on my text too. I agree exactly. with you. Exactly. Exactly. Well, ah. We're right there, sister. We're right on the same. <laughs> <laughs> so then th this brings up another question. Right. So then being connected to everyone in the world, right, we're all one uh, through whatever it is, Facebook and media and Twitter and and text and phone. Um, is that necessarily a good thing 
or is it does is it hindering us in any way? I think it's totally hindering us. I think that we are really starved for in-person connection with each other for real meaningful conversation. We're living in this little bit world where we think we are surrounded by a million friends, but at the end of the day, they're not the most nourishing of relationships. And we really need to get back to seeing people in person. I think as human beings, as animals, we need that. Yeah, absolutely. Speaking of someone who wants to talk to us sort of in person, Margaret just asked a question over here on Facebook. Um, and she said, how do you keep the I'm a failure feeling because we become overwhelmed? I guess like there's so much to do, we can never get it done. Then obviously we're failures, right? Um, yeah, it, there's a great book, Coach Yourself, Coach Yourself to T Success. I can't even speak it. <laughs> but it's by Tulane Maidana. And she talks about actually, instead of focusing on the things that you haven't done throughout the day, at the end of the day, you focus on the things that you did do. Oh, I made my bed. I did the dishes. I made a great dinner, right? So you focus on the things that you did do and you end the day on a positive note instead of, oh my gosh, I didn't do this. I didn't do that. I forgot to do this. I forgot to do that. Um, and it, it just shifts. It shifts the focus, I think. I also think that be realistic. You know, I like to say, what are the three most important things that I have to get done today? And if I get those three things done, it's a good day. And anything else after that is gravy. Whereas I used to have like 15 or 20 things I wanted to get done in that day. So you really focus on what's the most important thing for you that day. And it really, it helped me a lot in that whole, oh my God, I suck. I didn't get it done. And now I'm like, yeah, I did it. <laughs> And yeah, you know, someone so. else is asking yeah. another question. Conchetta, she's saying, oh, she saw she, a tie-dye shirt that read, I'm sorry I'm late, but I didn't really want to be here. <laughs> 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 but real, like when we're late or when we're procrastinating on something, I think that's an opportunity to get honest with ourselves. I don't really want to be doing this. Mm. Why am I doing this? Why did I agree to do this? And then nix it. Oh, yeah. If you're not screaming, hell yes, then it's a hell no. Hell yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you got to you gotta really guard the time like it's something precious because it is. It is precious. And you can't waste it on activities you don't like, on people you can't stand. You know, really be protective with your time. And something else that I love, instead of this whole, I'm so busy, I'm so busy, like maybe reframe that. I have a full life. I have a beautiful full life because the busy things getting old. It doesn't feel good when someone says it to you. It doesn't make you sound any more important than you were before. But having a full life, doesn't that sound so much better? Yeah, I like it. Energy. Yeah. 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 I think I think we have full lives in in amongst our busyness. <laughs> 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 but to not be so proud, right? It's that badge of honor. I'm so busy. We did this, we did that, then we're doing this other thing. And sometimes when I hear people talk like this, they're, they're actually talking about really lovely things. Oh, we're going on this vacation and then we're traveling here and then we're traveling there. But they don't sound like they're enjoying it very much. Mm -hmm. They sound like it's pretty mm -hmm. stressful. And I think, gee, I'm not going anywhere. I'll be right here chilling out when you get back. <laughs> yeah, I really try hard not to say that anymore. Like just, to, you know, unless it's like good, busy, it's all great. Like I really, I get annoyed when people say that to me because it's a, it's an instant barrier between people. It, be, it puts you into competitive mode. Like, mm. oh my God, she thinks she's busy. I'm so busy. Like, wait, I'm so busy. This is so busy. And you're already disconnecting from each other when you got together to be connected. So I would watch the languaging around it. It's not really a positive, great thing. It doesn't make anyone feel good. Yeah. And also, like, I would like to to interject that the busyness, like constantly doing doesn't give us any time for the silence, mm -hmm. right? For the quietude that we all need to really get inside and maybe understand ourselves better, because when we understand ourselves better, we can understand the world better. But if we're constantly moving and constantly going and where's where's that space? Where's that um, that space that we need to dip into? Right. That all the sages goes, talk about it. People go all day. Right. And then you go all night long and then you just drop into bed and wonder why you can't fall asleep. Right. There's right. If there's any time of the day to seek that silence, like I think everyone could put aside 10 minutes before bed to get quiet, hmm. do something that doesn't involve a screen, you know, like it, 
it might be a reach for everybody to pause during the day and, you know, meditate or do something like this, but certainly before bed, don't you think? I think it'll help them sleep better. Yeah. You got to turn off that technology, you know, a couple hours before. And I don't think, I think finding five minutes to just sit in silence in the morning is a really, really positive way to start the day and just remember why you're here, what you're doing, what it's all about, or else we get caught up in things that just don't matter. Yeah. You girls are smarties. I'm so happy that I'm here with you girls. (laughs) (laughs) Silence. That'd make for a great radio show. (laughs) I'll just meditate for an hour. (laughs) Well, I mean, besides the busyness that we go through, you know, like the everyday activities, I know that my clients always emphasize that they are way too busy, that they simply don't have time to sit, meditate, go shopping. They don't have time to create or go get great quality food. Uh, So what we've done here on this show and what ButcherBox has done is made it really easy for people to get great food without all the fuss and without all the busyness. Um, So uh, ButcherBox, for those of you that don't know, they source, they thoughtfully source grass-fed meats from animals that are naturally and humanely raised. So that takes the stress out of the buying process because you can relax knowing that you're not contributing to factory farming. And you don't even have to think about going to the grocery store, putting that onto your, I got to get to the grocery store today, put that on my list of things to do, right? Whether you want uh, chicken, beef, pork, or a variety of all three, and then you choose the specific cuts of the meat that you want. And that's already, it, it comes frozen and pre-packed and ready to be stored in your freezer for when you, whenever you need it. It's there for you, again, reducing the stress and the busyness about what to eat. And uh, although, if you forget to take it out of the freezer, it may create a little oh. stress. Right? You'll be like, <laughs> I forgot to take that out. <laughs> so you have to have it the next day. Um, and Butcher Box is only about $129 a month. So it comes out to $4 per day for you and your family's meat needs. So I know that that will help to reduce the financial stress as well. And then plus as an added bonus from us here at Healthy View Radio, you get $20 off and free bacon when you go to a butcherbox.com forward slash HVR. Uh, but let's get back to our topic today, busy, stressed, and food obsessed. Um, today, we have a very special guest on our show. I mean, I don't know if you guys and get, yeah. Oh yeah. I don't know if you have heard of who this guest is, but it's our very own Lisa, Lisa Lutan. Is it Lutan or Lutan? Lutan, like Lou has a tan. Lou ha- Lisa Lou has a tan. No, Lisa. <laughs> <laughs> Lutan, yeah. She is a mindset and lifestyle coach, the founder of Healthy, Happy, and Hip, an award-winning author of Busy, Stressed, and Food Obsessed, and a radio show host of your most favorite radio show, HealthyViewRadio.com. After co-founding a successful tech startup, Lisa collapsed from years of stress overload. Using the skills she developed as an entrepreneur, she self-hacked her own mind and body to restore her health, go on to feel better than ever. With private coaching, online courses, workshops, and retreats, Lisa helps highly successful hungry go-getters slow down, chill out, develop a better relationship with food and stress, helps them to look good and feel great. Oh, my God. I totally want to work with Lisa. Yes. Lisa, Lisa Lou has a tan. <laughs> <laughs> She's also been featured in numerous publications, including the Boston Globe, the Huffington Post, Mind Body Green, and Better After 50, and has been a speaker at companies such as Kripalu, we love Kripalu, Canyon Ranch, and Google. To learn more about Lisa, you're going to visit healthyhappyandhip.com, but I want you guys to stick around right after the break because we're going to talk with Lisa and get her insight and her wisdom on this whole busy, stressed, and food-obsessed situation. So don't go away. We'll be right back after the break. Call clear. Woo-hoo. Lisa, <laughs> Lisa, we are broadcasting live to Facebook. <laughs> Hi, Facebook. We're so glad you could join us. Any questions for me today, you guys? Come oh, on, yeah. bring it on. A time for everyone to ask Lisa their questions about being busy, and stressed, and oops. yeah. Come on, you guys. I know you're out there. We got some good comments coming in about this topic so far. I think everybody's really feeling it about the mm-hmm. busyness and the mm-hmm. overwhelm. And what is Conchetta saying? She's saying, um, I'm taking control of what other people want to delegate to me. If I choose mm-hmm. to handle the added products, projects, I feel more in control. 
if I choose to handle, if I choose to handle it, right. Like you don't have to choose to handle it. You can That's right. set the boundary, set it. No, I can't take that on. Thank you. Uh-huh. Bye-bye. <laughs> Not screaming. Yes. It's hell no. <laughs> hell no. <laughs> mm-hmm. Oh man. You guys, my little one, my four-year-old. So he can, you know, he wipes his own butt now. Oh, <gasps> very exciting. Yeah. Does he have don't. his own squatty potty? <laughs> <laughs> yes, Just curious. <laughs> <laughs> but you know he's all like mommy come wipe my butt I'm like, no you know i on that project anymore <laughs> by keeping up with us on twitter you can find us at voice america trn mommy wants to You're listening to Andrea Beeman, Lisa Lutian, and Michelle Fennighaus with Healthy View Radio. Do you have a question or comment for the show? Please call us right now at 1-866-472-5792. That's 1-866-472-5792. Or send us an email from our Voice America radio page. You'll find connections to reach any of the hosts there. Now, back to Healthy View Radio. Welcome back to Healthy View Radio, your place to turn when you're feeling busy, stressed, or food obsessed, or maybe just not your very best. And suddenly I feel very much like Dr. Seuss, so I'm going to stop that. (laughs) Before we get into things, I want to encourage all of our listeners to check out Giovanni Cosmetics for all your natural hair care needs. And we make it so easy for you to do that. You can go to GiovanniCosmetics.com slash HVR to get a $2 coupon. And then you can just walk your sassy pants right on over to Whole Foods, (laughs) Kroger's, Sprouts, and try Giovanni's Eco Chic hair care products. Eco? Did you say I Eco? Say eco. <laughs> you say Echo. What do you say, Lisa? Um, both. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. So take the side. I say Eco. Actually, I do say Eco. Woohoo! Oh, oh, sorry. <laughs> Our guest today says eco, and she is our very own Lisa Lutan. Lisa helps highly successful, hungry go-getters to slow down, chill out, and develop a better relationship with food and stress. And she is the author and the master of Busy, Stressed, and Food Obsessed. Lisa, thank you for joining us. (laughs) Oh, I'm so happy to be here. Thanks for having me today. You're welcome. You're welcome. You must tell us. What did you have for breakfast today? I had a really yummy breakfast. I took some mushrooms and kale and onions and I kind of some mushrooms. No, not that (laughs) kind of mushrooms. Out of the fridge and put them in some ghee and added some eggs and kind of fried it all up and then had some avocado on the side. And it was really yummy. Delicious. That does sound yummy. Yes. A little borsari. Do you guys use borsari? What's borsari? It's this little spice. Um, they sell it at Whole Foods, usually by the meat section, but it's great on veggies. And it's kind of like a salt blend. Borsari black label. Ooh. So good. Is that like Trader Joe's everything but the bagel seasoning? It's not <laughs> quite. It's just this specific blend that works. Re- I love it on vegetables. All right. We will check that out. Yes. I think I know what you're going to say to this next question. I'm going to ask it anyway. What is one thing that you do every day that has the greatest impact on your life, Lisa? I know what you're thinking. You're Mm. thinking I'm going to say meditation, but I'm actually going to change it a little bit. I'm going to say my morning routine. And the whole thing takes maybe 15 minutes, but it includes meditation. It includes my gratitude journal. It includes some tapping and it includes anything else, even setting some goals, those three goals for the day that I talked about earlier. And it just gets me grounded and ready to start the day in a great way. I love that answer from everyone who doesn't have little kids. All right. <laughs> <I love it. laughs> morning, it's only 15 minutes. 15 minutes, you guys, you can do it while someone's screaming in the other room that you got to wipe their butt. Okay. (laughs) (laughs) So that sounds lovely. And you are a lovely person, but you must tell us what is your guilty pleasure? You know, years ago, I would have said gelato or something like that, but I don't feel guilty anymore about any food. I think there's room for all of it. So my guilty pleasure now is definitely very yummy, delicious spa treatments like Mm. massages with hot oil, you know, or things like that. That's totally my guilty pleasure. 
Yeah. I'm in on that. <laughs> <laughs> Lay it on Can't me. Can't get enough of that. <laughs> well, I loved when we first met and we were first talking and I knew you were a health coach and, you know, I felt like I knew something about you. But then you told me that you were a tech entrepreneur and that, you know, you and your husband started this business. And I thought, wow, like she's got this whole other world of experience um, to bring to the table. So uh, I'm interested in when you say that your skills as a tech entrepreneur came into play when you found yourself in a health crisis, how did those skills transfer and help you self-hack your way out of the problem? That's a good question. So basically, I crashed and burned from years of not taking care of my, myself. And it brought me to a really dark place in my life because doctors were just giving me meds without telling me what went wrong. And nobody had answers. There wasn't even Google then. So I was just- What? You know, there wasn't even Google? How, how long ago did this happen? In this 1930s? was 1994. <laughs> so there really wasn't, Google wasn't like something we used on a daily basis. Um, I was 31. I just had my second out of three kids. I just moved into a new house. And I literally ended up thinking I was having a stroke and rushed to the emergency room. And long story, I don't want to go. It's, it's in the book. But anyway. <laughs> Wait, um, which book is that? It's called Busy, Stressed, and Food Obsessed. And the bottom line is that I was in a new town. I didn't have any friends yet. My family didn't live nearby. My husband was working still 80 hours a week. And I was a mess. And I was still working, too, because just stress. Got to keep going. I was crazy. And so I really went into this dark place where I was suffering a lot of symptoms. I was depressed. I wasn't feeling good. I had no idea what was wrong with me. And the, the anxiety of not knowing what was wrong with me was causing secondary symptoms as well. And after, you know, literally two years going to doctors and healers and nobody could do anything, I was like, damn it, I'm an entrepreneur. I solve problems. And I took an entirely different approach to it. And I used my creative problem solving skills, my resiliency, and everything else I could, you know, bring up to say, I'm going to figure this out. And I started researching family histories and researching medications that were prescribed to me that I wasn't taking, <laughs> and literally paying attention to everything I was doing. And my life literally changed upside down. So you mm -hmm. brought a consciousness to here's the problem. I'm a bringing my awareness to it. I'm not going to just accept what maybe so-and-so is telling me to do. I'm going to question it, research it. And uh, it sounds like you really held the reins. Yeah, I, I did. And it wasn't fast. You know, w there weren't health coaches that I knew of or anyone to help me on this process back then. And so I started paying attention. I started noticing that my the effects of caffeine and sleep and sugar and healthy food and not healthy food and even my thought patterns. And over time, it was a slow process. As I started making these little changes, I said, wow, I feel like a different person. And I restored my health. And then I thought, well, if I feel okay, maybe if I keep going with this, let's see what happens. And I went from feeling better and better and better. So then years later, when I went back to school, it was like, oh my God, I got this. You know, it just all fell into place for me. So I have a question. So the doctors, nobody could tell you what was going on with you. You crashed and burned. When you when you reclaimed your health again, did you go back to the doctors and did they, did they say anything to you? No. So what happened was in the emergency room, um, when I was first brought, I had all these crazy symptoms. Like I had no peripheral vision. I had tingles mm -hmm. and it was some resident and he basically said, Oh, it's probably stress or postpartum. And I was like, no way. <laughs> like this is an alien in my body. And it, and that actually that diagnosis even felt very minimizing to me because mm -hmm. I was having really terrible things in my body. And over the next couple of years, I had MRIs and I had this, and then they'd say, oh, we found something. Oh, but it might not be anything. They took me down these different paths and I realized this is just not working. It's not happening. And no, I didn't really go back to the doctors because it was a slow process and it did take years to really put it all together. You know, I didn't realize that anxiety, for example, was something that I had or my family history because I was always very cool and calm. And the bottom line was that I was sucking it in. I was absorbing the anxiety and it was impacting my body, even though on the outside, nobody would have ever known. 
So it, that's why it was so difficult for me to figure out what was really going on. I was, I was not, I didn't really know my body at all. Hmm. I was living in my head. I don't think I knew I had a body. You know? <laughs> <laughs> Except to possibly criticize it, I bet, if you're like, yeah, <laughs> yeah exactly. Ah, oh, that makes a lot of sense to me. Well, that is the entrepreneurial spirit, right? I'm kind of figured everything is figure outable. It is. It really <laughs> is. And don't you guys take that approach now with your clients or people in your life? Like you don't have to settle for no answer and you don't have to settle for not feeling good. Like it might take time, but usually there is an answer out there. And that changed my entire way of looking at life and the world. Like if something hurts, I'm going to figure out why, and I'm not going to live in pain. And I live my life that way. I walk my talk and I feel great. Mm. I really do. That reminds me of the, um, the member of the X-Files, their tagline, the truth is out there. <laughs> Just gotta keep looking for it. Yeah, it's true. <laughs> Well, that's kind of what it's like. And I, you know, I have a story that's similar to yours, but it is, it's like being a detective. What's really going on here? What are they saying? What are they not saying? What did he mean when he said it was just stress, you know, mm -hmm. and then putting all those pieces together so that you have so much to offer your clients because you have gone through this. At what point was a very scary uh, circumstance of feeling terrifying. Like, oh, my goodness. Yeah, the scariest ever. I, and I thought I was losing my mind because I was going crazy not knowing what was going on in my body. And I'm sure a lot of people out there can relate. You have something, you know, you don't feel well and doctors are just like, ah, eh, whatever. And take it seriously. Listen, your body knows. And that's my message. Find someone out there, find the expert. There is someone out there that can help you feel better. So interesting. So I think what you're describing, you know, in retrospect, one of the things going on for you, the term for it would be HPA axis dysregulation, your body's in a state of constant stress, and all of the negative fallout from that. And I think a lot of women are in on, on the spectrum of something like that happening to them. Chronic stress is <laughs> pretty common. So with so many women uh, dieting and, you know, in embracing this notion that they have to get skinny all the time, the diet mentality. How do you think that women can really get over that? How can we get past the diet mentality? Well, I think we have to, because the moment you say the word diet, for so many of us, we go deprivation mode, I'm going to eat a chocolate cake, you know, and it just backfires the moment it starts. So I think that, you know, literally look, taking the power away from food, I never say this is a good food and this is a bad food. It's this is a food I eat more often and this is a food I eat less often. And even that just takes the stress right out of it and just saying, it's okay. I want to eat foods that make me feel good. And when I start paying attention to how foods make feel, I'm naturally drawn to foods that make me feel more energetic, more happy. And the foods that make me feel crappy, I don't want to eat those foods all the time because then I'm going to walk around feeling disgusting. So when we take away the pressure around it and make it this investigation that you mentioned, that everything is interesting. Everything is just data. Mm -hmm. Then the stress melts away and we can look at it. What works for me? We're all different. Why do you think women beat themselves up over food? Like what's going on there in the first place? Because I think the idea is that when we're busy and we're stressed, you posit that that leads us to obsess about our food. Well, I think that what I find with many women is that we're using food as a distraction. You know, we are so busy and stressed that we're exhausted. And most of the time we really might need a break and a nap. And in the middle of the day, if you're working in an office, it's not socially acceptable to say, I'm gonna go take a nap, but it's very socially acceptable to say, oh, snack time, or, oh, I need a cup of coffee, or, oh, I need this, or, you know, food has become a way of taking a break often for us. And if it's not a physical break, it can be a mental break. So for example, you're doing something you don't like, or you're bored, you're sitting at the end of yoga and savasana, hmm, what should I pick up at the market? You know, we go to food if food is our thing. Now, some people, it might be wine, and some people, it might be something else, and you can literally take out the busy, stressed, and food-obsessed and substitute that with whatever your particular obsession is, but it means that you are not giving yourself that time and space that you're truly craving. That makes so much sense. We are. Food is the acceptable uh, drug of choice. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The addiction, yeah. Yeah. 
So an addiction is just literally something that we are missing, right? The, we're craving for this thing that we're missing. I think it's a void in our life. Mm -hmm. You know, I, it might not necessarily be an addiction per se, but there we're definitely filling voids. And I think that certain foods do have an addictive quality, definitely sugar, you know, and other foods, the process of eating might be addictive, mm -hmm. you know, just wanting to go in there and keep eating. So again, taking that time, that investigative approach to understand yourself as an eater and not saying I have to be different, saying let's set a strategy around how I am that might work. And so it takes pressure from trying to be somebody you're not and working with what you have. Lisa, when you work with your clients, I'm curious if you find, did they ever say, yeah, yeah, Lisa, that sounds really good. All right. And then they kind of say they're going to, they're going to go for that. They're going to work on changing their mindset, but then they just fall into the same old, same old, too busy, too stressed routine. I mean, I'm sure many of them do, but I have to say that when you take a really slow approach and you just add a few things at a time and they get this instant benefit and they see it's not something hard, it's something that works, like even just starting a gratitude journal, you know, something like that, they go, wow, this really works for me. It doesn't feel hard to continue. And if it feels like a fight or deprivation, it's not going to last. So I've had really good success with my clients. The one thing I do see that people struggle with is, you know, some people will take a break from sugar and they'll feel so great and they're eating super healthy and then the holidays roll around or vacation and the sugar comes back in and they get back into that pattern. And that happens to me too. It happens to all of us. But the more they learn, okay, I felt better when I wasn't eating sugar. I have that option. I have that option if I want it. And again, it's not like I have to, but it's there if I want it. And it just my whole goal is take the stress out of it. That makes so much sense. So you'll have to tell everybody where can they go to learn more about you and your book? Well, my website is healthyhappyandhip.com. And on there, you can find out more about my morning habits. But the book is on Amazon. It's got a ton of five-star reviews on there. And I'd love it if there were more, hint, hint. And it's also on Audible. <laughs> and you can hear me reading it, which is always fun. Oh, you recorded it for oh, us. Yes, I did. And she okay. has a nice, calming, soothing voice, right? Yeah, I listened to that. <laughs> yeah. I listen to it every <laughs> Thursday on Healthy View Radio, too. <laughs> That's what my clients tell me. I'm always like, really? Yeah. <laughs> Calm oh, that up. is excellent. And so how many, do you have an idea of how many people have bought your book so far? How many lives you've reached with this? I, I don't know. I really don't know. But I want to give a shout out to you ladies in San, An San Antonio, Texas, who formed a book club around my book. Aww. And then I just lit up my life. They gather together each week. They read a chapter and they go for a two mile walk. So you ladies rock. <laughs> oh, hey, that is awesome stuff. Well, Lisa, thank you so much for joining us today and telling us all about your, your views on being busy, stressed and food obsessed. We are going to head on out to a break. And when we get back, we're going to be with Donna Markison, who is a health coach. And I can't wait to hear what she has to say. So stay with us and we'll be right back. All clear. Thank you. Okay, Donna, I okay. see you over here. I'm going to bring you on as a panelist. She's coming on uh, Zoom. We're video. Zooming her All in. Right. Yeah. Where is she? There she is. Donna. Donna, Donna, are you with us? Donna. Oh, gotta love that. Um. Well, Donna, do does you she have, have the call-in line just in case we can't get her? Yes. Oh, Donna. Hold on, hold on. <laughs> oh. She's there, she's there. I, I was just here a second ago. You're here again? <laughs> but you can't see me. No. Oh, we can hear on. you, though. See. Are you kidding me? All right, Stop. Me have you turned on your video camera? Yeah, there's a on. let's see. Um, I have another, I have another uh computer, so let me just use that instead. Run, we only have a few. <laughs> okay. We're coming back really. Yeah, you might want to call in on the phone. Um, it's launching right now, so I should. You gave me the link, okay? okay. 
Yeah, just don't leave us on this one until you get the other one. Launch, 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 launch. <laughs> oh, it's so fun. Uh, See uh, you guys. Yay! Oh, wait, now we have two Donnas. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Donna, I'm Lisa. I'm going to be interviewing you today. All right, let me shut this old one off so yes. you won't have two of me. Here we got a little echo going. Can we um, get rid of the first Donna? Yep. Done. All right. Woo-hoo! Modern technology. Modern technology going on. Okay, yes. so Donna, we are on Facebook Live right now, but the radio show will go live in another minute or so. Nope, here we go. Oh, here we go oh. now. <laughs> You're listening to Andrea Beeman, Lisa Lutan, and Michelle Fennighaus with Healthy View Radio. Do you have a question or comment for the show? Please call us right now at 1-866-472-5792. That's 1-866-472-5792. Or send us an email from our Voice America radio page. You'll find connections to reach any of the hosts there. Now, back to Healthy View Radio. Hey, everybody. Welcome back. I'm Lisa Lutan, and I just had a blast being interviewed on this show. (laughs) By our two favorite hosts. Yeah, (laughs) my favorite co-hosts, Michelle and Andrea. This is like my lucky day. Um, In case you missed it, we were talking about being busy, stressed, and food obsessed. You don't want to hear more about that just now because I want to thank our sponsor, Squatty Potty. Now, this might be too much information, but my grandfather would announce in the morning, it's going to be a good day if he started the day with a good poop. Now, if he had had a Squatty Potty back then, every day would have been a good day because it's such an awesome product. So this one's for you, Papa, up there, wherever you are. And Squatty Potty is offering our listeners 10% off at squattypotty.com slash HVR. That's Healthy View Radio. Go out there and get your Squatty Potty now. I am super excited to introduce you to our next guest, Donna Markison. Donna is an author, a certified holistic health coach, known for her fierce advocacy for taking control of one's health. She teaches us to summon the courage within to question the Western medicine approach towards disease and ill health, to get to the root cause of our pain and stressors, and to heal our bodies. Boy, I could have used you way back when. Her new book, Finding My Way, Facing My Journey with Courage, highlights the many health challenges that Donna has gone through, including breast cancer, autoimmune disease, chronic neck, shoulder, and back pain, fatigue, and depression. And through diet and lifestyle changes, she's been able to get to the root cause and eliminate the need to stay on medication. Super exciting. Donna offers corporate workshops, classes, and one-on-one coaching, empowering others to take back control of their body and mind to live a long, healthy life. Donna, welcome to the show. I can't hear you. And now we've lost her audio. Glad to be here. Yay! (laughs) There she is. (laughs) Donna, are you busy, stressed, and food obsessed? Just curious. Yes, I am. Can't you tell? (laughs) I I had two of me showing up today. (laughs) Okay. Well, Donna, you've endured a lot of health struggles throughout your life. Tell us how you went from struggling to changing your work to actually help others with this. Well, it all, you know, it started, um, I had a lot of issues when I was younger in in growing up and in my twenties and thirties. And it was a lot of the issues back then were being in a job that I disliked and just kind of going with the flow of that and, you know, not addressing my feelings. Um, I also had some deep rooted issues where I would not set healthy boundaries and I would let people walk all over me I you know I would let I would I would be a yes person um and so what does that do to you you know when you let others take advantage of you without speaking up it causes a lot of internal stress it caused for me the the stress manifested in the form of chronic full body pain from neck and shoulder pain to back pain and And so that was um, the beginning of my, you know, I was totally unaware back then. So I was treated with multiple medication 
from SSRIs because you must be depressed because you have all of these issues with your body. So treat with that, treat with pain meds and then um, muscle relaxes. So the, the reason why I, I say I want to teach others to get to the uh, root cause of an issue because as we know, the Western medical approach treat, treats your symptoms you know, and we need to take the functional medicine approach where we get to the root cause of the issue. And so it wasn't until in my mid forties when I got hit with breast cancer that I started to wake up to the things that I was number one doing to myself, which was an unhealthy diet. Um, I was allowing, you know, or allowing people to walk all over me and just not stand up for myself when I needed to. And, you know, that was the, the beginning of my um, uh, self-discovery of, of saying, you know, this, that something different has to happen in order for me to gain health. And, you know, that's when I started to open up and, and look at alternative treatment options. Donna, on your website, I love this. You said the gift of cancer. Sudden illness can be our launching pad for a new way of living, opening our minds to more meaningful experiences and living authentically instead of by default. Can you talk a little bit more about that? Yeah, well, you know, basically that was it. When, before cancer, I, I call it, I was pretty much sleepwalking through my life. I wasn't happy. I wasn't addressing the issues in my life that needed to be addressed. And, you know, you know what happens, we wake up, we go to work, come home, go to sleep, wake up, go do the same thing over and over again. With, and we, we actually take this on as being that's our normal way of, of being. And there's many, many people out there that are unhappy in their jobs and are doing this on a daily basis. But what happened with cancer is it forced me to slow down. It forced me to take a deep rooted look at how I was living my life. And it brought in more uh, spiritual awareness for me. It brought in more self care. I, I decided that it was time for me to take care of myself. And that's, it, it literally changed my whole perception of life. And how long did this journey, this transformation take for you? Because it sounds like you were learning new things, you were implementing new ways of being. Was it a quick thing? Was it over years? No, it was pretty much, you know, it was over years. It can, it, I was just learning and growing cons and consuming. Um, I call it, I was going on a high speed chase to find myself. Um, I was consuming every single workshop and class and book and everything on self, self help. Um, and I was learning a lot, a ton. And as you know, when you learn, the quickest way to learn is to teach it. So then I got into, um, I don't know if you're familiar with Janet Atwood's book, The Passion Test. Mm -hmm. uh, but anyways, it's a fabulous tool to use to help people find what is the most important things in their life that, and, and how to stay aligned with those. Because in my life, I was so out of alignment that was my goal is I wanted to help others achieve that, you know, that inner peace. What and kind so, of work were you doing before that was not giving you inner peace? Oh, uh, well, I was in corporate sales. Um, you know, That'll it was you. great. I started out had a lot. <laughs> but, yeah. you know, it, it, towards the end of it, it was really emotionally and mentally draining. And I wasn't fulfilled. And I knew I wanted now at post-cancer, I was looking for more meaning. So did you go back to school to study? Tell us about how you went on to become a coach. So post-cancer, I, um, I had had another setback. I was diagnosed with rheumatoid arthritis. And I had two years post-cancer. Um, and they said a lot of it had to do with the chemotherapy and my diet and so forth. So instead, I, they put me on these really heavy-duty medications, which... Also, after taking that medication three months into it, called Fosamax, some, some people may be familiar with that, I literally, my whole body shut down and I couldn't move. I couldn't even, you know, walk around the block with my dog. And I was very healthy back then. 
So what I did was instead of just taking what they told me, which they said, Donna, you're going to have to live with this and you will have to, for the rest of your life, be on this medication and just be, deal with treating my symptoms. So this made me extremely upset and depressed. And so instead of accepting that fate, or I call it that label, you know, you have a RA now, rheumatoid arthritis now, this is what you take and now go on your merry way and that's how you have to live your life. And so I decided to, to go visit a uh, Dr. Diadamo. We all know the late James Diadamo, uh, father of naturopathic medicine. He had a clinic in Portsmouth, New Hampshire, which was only an hour away. And I was so thrilled that I did get to meet him. Anyways, he told me after looking at me and doing a thorough exam, he said, your body is loaded with inflammation. And it's brought on by years of being, you know, food intolerance that you're eating that you weren't sure of, chemotherapy, the Fosamax medication. It all kind of just came to a, you know, screeching halt. And I got this uh, immune, detri you know, detrimental immune response. So he cleaned up my, he cleaned up my diet. I cleaned up my diet. Just ate real foods you know, a lot of vegetables um, and did some cleansing therapies and I had high quality protein. Four months into be going to his clinic and doing cleansing therapies and eating this way, I reversed my symptoms and I was 100% symptom free. Donna, you are truly an inspiration to all of us and all of those out there listening, you know, that you can heal yourself by taking good care of yourself. So would you let our listeners know where they can learn more about you and your offerings? Yeah, sure. You can find um, information. My website is finding your health. That's I N G finding your health.com. And I want everybody to find their health. Um, and I'm on, on Facebook as well. And my book, Finding My Way, Facing My Journey with Courage is on Amazon. And just like you, Lisa, I love those reviews. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, well, it was such a pleasure having you on the show today. Thank you so much. Thank you. Okay, ladies, what are your big takeaways for today? Uh, take a nap, <laughs> do a meditation. Uh, no, I mean, you know, there's always a great takeaway here. Um, so like Lisa, like you said, uh, you start your day with this. Uh, it wasn't the one thing, right? It was this routine. Right. So start the day with this routine because the rest of the day could be chaos, could be something terrible that happens. Right. Could be running around with chicken without a head. But if you start the day with that initial routine of your self-care, um, that is what helps to bring down the stress levels and bring down, you know, help you to come on back down to, to yourself where the magic is. And um, and like, you know, Donna. Uh, said, and I think Donna's from Boston. I mean, she said a couple of hey, things. Boston. <laughs> yeah, I heard that <laughs> accent, <Yeah. laughs> you know, and, and it really to start to question and then find the answers elsewhere um, because they're not going to be given to us at a lot of the doctor's offices, unfortunately. So we got to really start searching. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. The, the, the big similarity between Lisa and Donna today were that they're both women who went through a health crisis. And then instead of just lying there and saying, okay, doc, pump me up with whatever you got, or just tell me what to do and I'll do it and I'll suffer. They took the reins and they said, I'm going to figure this out, or I'm going to try something else, or I'm going to question this because I know that this is not how I'm supposed to be feeling. And I think that we can all do this in our lives in big ways and in small ways. And we must, if we're going to live a healthy life, we have to hold the reins on our own health. I absolutely agree. And I agree. I think that Donna's story, my story, and so many women and men out there, you know, you're going and going until you're not going anymore. And your body's saying, hold on. And it's a time you can just curl up in a ball or you can say, okay, what can I learn from this? And like, as Donna said, you know, do I have to change my my food? Do I have to change my job sometimes? Do I have to change the way I think about things? Do I have to change even my, my spirituality? And you can. You absolutely can if it's important enough to you. And what's more, what's more important than your health? So I think that that is a big takeaway is make the changes. You can do this and you can feel better. It's empowering. Yeah. 
totally mm. empowering. So I would really like you guys to check us out and give us some reviews on iTunes. Not just any kind of review. Five star. Five star reviews. I'm going to read one that we got. Excellent hosts and guests by M. Golly One. Lisa, Michelle, and Andrea are all rock stars in the world of health and nutrition. They combine their own knowledge with a great conversational style of interviewing some of the top names in the wellness industry today. I've learned so many things from why I might be experiencing inflammation to what to know about the latest health findings are what to eat to have more energy, clearer skin, and better sleep. Thanks for that great review. And you too could get featured on our show if you take the time to go to healthyviewradio.com slash review and leave us a great review. It has been great talking with you. We will see you next week with another great show. And in the meantime, have a super duper week. Take care. Bye, super everyone. Duper. <laughs> Bye. All clear. Oh, super duper.